Well, hey folks, JP here, and I'm in Edgar, Louisiana, and we have a colony that's uh, in this, uh, this house behind me, and um, we're going to remove them. They're in between the floor joists. This is my customer, Mr. Silas, and uh, he got this, this uh, building at an auction and had it moved over. And then, uh, what, about a week ago or so, yes. the bees moved in. And you can see they uh, they rolling in this little spot right here. So we're going to go ahead and cut the plastic and expose a hive and get them on out of All right, folks, this is where our hive is. They're in between that joist you're seeing and this joist, but they're over this steel beam. And there they are, just tucked in there. They could have gone much further back in underneath the trailer. Okay, this is where they started. It's going to be a little, little challenge to get them all out, but... uh. We got enough room, we'll, we'll work it. So I'm going I'm to get the bee back out right now and start vacuuming bees. Queen's on my dang shoulder right here. <laughs> How about that? I've been smoking them hard to run them off the combs because it's a tight spot and um she must have dropped down or something i don't know but she's on my shoulder just look down there she is how about that all right folks so we just got our queen and you can see i'm laying down and i'm doing this uh <laughs> upside down but uh what i've been i'm gonna show you what i've been doing but uh basically it's a tight spot and ordinarily i, I vacuum some bees and then I would uh, go ahead and cut my comb sections and, and transfer the comb sections into my hive box setup uh, with bees on the comb. But such and such a tight spot, I've been smoking behind the hive and I've been running them forward and vacuuming. So we, we vacuumed more than half these bees. And the last one, two, three, four comb sections I'm looking at right now are devoid of bees. So this is one way to do it, I guess. What it looks like now, I said I've been smoking behind the hive and I've been running them this way and vacuuming most of them up in this little area right here. My queen, I went ahead and put her on top of the steel beam just so the bees can maybe get down there and tend to her a little bit. Okay? Because uh looked like she was maybe slightly stressed and I'm going to make sure she looks look like she's doing maybe a little bit better now. I must have smoked her pretty good and uh, we'll let them tend to her. I'm going to start pulling them combs out in just a second. It's dark. Got all the comb out. We uh, just shook the bees. I'm going to show you what that looks like. And uh, it was a good little removal out of this trailer. So let me show you. We just shook them. Orient and doing their thing. Okay. I'm going to leave this box here. I'm going to try to maybe come back tomorrow. And um, I'm going to have to give them some more space. I have a deep with me, a top coat, but I didn't bring a bottom board with me. I've been running and gunning. This gentleman, Mr. Silas, is probably going to go ahead and keep some bees on his property. We're going to talk about that. Set him up and let him get into this wonderful hobby. So Can't wait. All right. Down to Edgard again. It's uh, Sunday, April 1st, April Fool's Day. And uh, I went ahead and, and took a hive that was positioned over here. And um, actually, they were positioned right here. And I went ahead and set them up in a deep, okay? I transferred the five frames of a nuke, added to, to the, a deep, and I uh, added five more frames with foundation on them, black pier coat, waxed. And uh, so here are bees now, and I released the queen, okay? And um, I don't have any footage, but uh, as I was pulling frames, I was looking at them, and they're already, they've already, you know, attached the combs to the bottom and the sides of the frames, and they're festooning and, and building from the top board down. And also from the, the gap between the comb and the top board are building up. So uh, these are very good bees. They're getting at it. And obviously there's a lot of nectar uh, coming in because uh, they're making progress since we removed them just a couple of days ago. Just a swarm I caught yesterday on a satsuma tree. All right. And uh, they're doing fine. This is a great spread out here in Edgord. I mean, a lot, a lot of property. And uh, there's a peach tree. And we got other peaches. And we got mulberry trees. And they got tallow and man they got a lot of this lantana and the bees love the lantana because I don't see a bee on here now but 
that's what we look through here we probably find some but uh and we just saw uh had a bee tree over here it fell over by the barn way on the other end there and uh it's already been robbed out who knows a little hive i removed from his from his building right here and could have come from them but uh we were eating some of these mulberries the other day let me get over to it and boy, look look at the blackberries let me get a blackberry out Okay. Let's see. They're not as sweet as the as the mulberries. These are like candy. Mm. Mm -hmm. Man. Mm. I mean like candy. Just like candy, folks. Mm. I don't love them. So, I'm going to help Mr. Silas set up some bees, work them and so forth. And, uh, man, he's got all his land. I think he said it goes three miles back. That's a good <laughs> chunk of land. All right. So, I hope y'all enjoyed the video. Another one from JP the Bee Band. Y'all have a good day.